Uh, so back, back to <laughs> the sound of music. I really like that fight scene when yeah. uh, Julie Andrews just punched all those ninjas in the hallway. Hello and welcome to All Doubt. I'm Vincent. I'm Joel. And today we'll be talking about the sound of music as part of our... How did we describe it? Our capital C classic films. Yes. Uh, we'll be talking about that a bit later. But first, Joel, how have you been? Oh, I've, I've been good. Yet again, I did not prepare for what's new with me. I've been playing Papers, Please lately. Mm. You know that game? Yes, it's on our list of things to talk about later. Oh, that's right. One of our assignments. Yeah, I <laughs> forgot all about that. It's it's super good. It's uh, It's interesting... In that, like, I feel like I could be really apt at checking people's passports now mm. just through playing this game, which is a weird feeling. But, I, you know, every game prepares you for something, really. You can always think of it like that. And this game prepares you to be a passport reader. Not really. It prepares you to be a uh, a critical thinker. Uh, it's... It, uh... It, it, pre- it prepares you the same way that one of those, like, highlight magazine books prepare you to, like, spot the difference in two pictures. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, is, is a useful skill in certain it's, situations. In grade three, around grade four, maybe, it's super useful. <laughs> it's, it's a fun game. How are you liking it? Yeah, so you're, you're liking the game? Yeah, it's... it's uh, I was really into it. I tend to get really into games for a short period of time. Mm. And I was into it for like a good month. And I just recently stopped playing it because I found a point that I could call finishing it. Okay. The problem with Don't Starve, which I was just playing before that game, is that it, it encourages you to just keep restarting because it's one of those games with no end point. Right, it's a, it's a roguelike. Survive. Roguelike? It's a survival right? game. A survival yeah. game. Yeah. It's more yeah, accurate. Exactly. But yeah. So there's never an ending, and the only reason I stopped playing it was because I was so frustrated of just dying at the same spot every single time. I get marginally further in the game, and then I'd have to restart again, and I'd get marginally further, and it's such a time commitment. But with this game, it gives you endings, and I took an ending, and I took a horrible ending. Um, I was about to get... They were threatening that within the game, my character, who is checking passports at a fictional um, order stop... Yeah, it's it's like a fictional, like, Eastern European-esque yeah, m- military European nation. Right. Yeah. Right. And I was under threat by my supervisors that that they were going to figure me out, take me away from my post, probably put me into a uh, an internment camp, something like that. I was basically going to lose, and I had right. two days to steal passports and get my family out of the country. And I I had I saved up enough money to buy one. It was quickly becoming apparent that I could not buy four more. And it said, you have enough passports to escape without your family. And I was like, okay, that's, that's an ending. I took that and it gave me a little, little, uh, like eight bit and you know, it's like cutscene cut at the end or something. Yeah. Scene. Yeah. Not eight bit, like 32 bit. <laughs> it's um, one of those like calculator pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stick person. Uh, it gave me a, a nice little ending of like me escaping and my family just staying in the country. And it, like, that's, that's a horrible ending, but I finished the game and that was so much more satisfying than Don't Starve in that respect. Don't Starve is still a great game, but I just needed an ending. That's what I've been up to. As far yeah, as and, games go. Yeah, and we'll talk about that game more when it comes around. Hell yeah. Um, have you have you played any of the other games by the same guy? No, I didn't know he had more. His He has a... I think that's his biggest, like, proper release oh. game. Uh, I think on his website. I forget what his name is or what his game company is called. Mm. But... Uh, if you look it up, um, if you go to his website, one of his other games is, I believe it's called The Republia Times, mm. B- Republia Times, and you're a, a newspaper editor, mm. um, and in a similar situation oh, okay. of being under the thumb of some uh, totalitarian government, mm. and you have to decide between, like, per- like I say percentage-wise, but it's not necessarily percentage-wise, you choose which one's going to be, like, the headline story, and then what the stories are going to be that like, fill in the spaces around it. Oh, okay. Um, and like which of those, uh, or how many of those are like state propaganda, mm. you know, like the leader is amazing. The leader 
walked to the moon and came back before lunch or some some like <laughs> crazy thing like that. Yeah. And how much is is like people are starving in the streets because the lead, like because the government is terrible. Mm. You know, and, and like um, if you if you you know, and similar to with papers, please, you know, it, yeah. and like how much you do of which will affect um, the story of the game, such as it is. You can basically be on the side of the people or the government or something in between. Right. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're looking for more Papers, Please style game. Well, um, I would love more from that guy. Yeah. I was super impressed that he did the programming, the graphics, the or the, you know, the art style, and the music. Like, myself being a musician, just writing the music for a whole game would be a huge endeavor in itself. And to be able... He sounds very skilled and creative. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to play more of his stuff. Oh, yeah, there's, like, a bunch of... Um, I'm always amazed by the, like, the things that are made by a single person. Like yeah. These, like, big, like, like um, Papers, Please, or, like, um, what was it? Like, ho- like uh, MS Paint Adventures, you know, like, Homestuck and Problem Sleuth. Oh, I've heard of those. Where it's, like, a webcomic... Um, with the framing of it's like a text adventure that mm. like you're typing command like instead of next it's like the command you type in to if it was a game to get to the next thing mm. um and it's like a billion panels long mm. it's like insanely long and he also like every uh, for problem sleuth um it'd just be you know like a one panel thing and like or, or i haven't looked at it in a while but like it's a thing and then like Is this a game no no it's a webcomic oh okay and but it's framed as if it was a text adventure. Oh, okay, I see. Or or like a game where you type in text commands, mm. and uh, instead of pressing next for the next panel, it's it's the button is like the command you type, mm. you, the you know, quote unquote the command you type mm. to to do the next thing. I see. And every, I forget. I think it's like every month or at the end of every chapter. And he would be like releasing these like every day mm. or like every other day or like really like weird like. Uh, like freakishly frequently <laughs> um at the end of every like chunk he'd do like a flash animation mm. of like a music video or something or like some not a music video in that it's not it's not like a choreographed thing but it's like a mi- like a cutscene yeah basically and he makes his own music for that as well oh man um and then he took it up another step with um Homestuck, which is all just like flash animation rather than like static images, mm. uh, and that is also like I, I sort of fell off of that because it's like a billion pages, but it is also a billion pages long. <laughs> um, and there's also uh, D- Dwarf Fortress, which we've talked about before in oh, our yeah. diehard episode of it's That's just true. being programmed by one guy, and it's like super super detailed and such. Um, but yeah, no, those are always fascinating of how specific and curated and particular they are. Yeah. Have you been up to anything else? Oh, well, I mean, a few more things, but what about you? What's new with you? Uh, I've I've been watching movies. <laughs> You're um, kidding. Have I... I forget, did we talk about... I, it's been a while since we recorded. Yeah. Um, was that before? Did I talk about um, that, that Hugh Jackman movie where he's P.T. Bar, The Greatest Showman? No, I don't think you did. Okay, so I apparently, I guess... Oh, man, yeah. but if someone's listening to these back-to-back... <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Um, I think you did. I did. Yeah. Okay. You totally did. Cool. Well, is. since then, I've seen um, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, oh. when it came back to the theater because of the Oscars. Mm. And then a bunch more people came to see it because, mm. I guess, you know, it's been confirmed to be good <laughs> by... Oscar. Who, who does the Oscars? Like Oscar. It, it's like... Like there are some there are some awards that are like by the people, you know, and there are some awards that oh, are yeah. by the industry. Yeah, that's right. Or like by critics or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, it's been certified good by whoever the the Oscar people are. Okay. Um, it was good. Yeah. Uh, I also watched uh, Black Panther. Okay. It was really good. Which just came out. Which just came out. And you can cut that because we too. continually to timestamp these <laughs> months after, <laughs> uh, months before they release. Right. Um, to further timestamp, the Die Hard episode just came out, uh, literally today. Die Hard episode. <laughs> oh, oh, our episode. <laughs> Someone else is doing Die Hard. Um, but no, I, I I watched Black Panther. It was really good, mm. really good writing. Um, very funny. Uh, maybe not very funny, but the funny parts are very funny. I had heard that it was very overhyped. Hmm. You don't think so? I don't think so. Mm. Um. Yeah. No. I I enjoyed it. Like I've and um. So I work in a movie theater, and I I I've seen more people. Uh, dressed up, for the lack of a better word, for Black Panther than I saw for Star Wars. What were they dressing up in? 
The Black Panther outfit, I guess? N- like, n- like traditional African clothing. Oh, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Because it's, it's about a fictional African country, right? Yes. Um, but to see, uh, this community, uh, uh, uh be so excited. About like this movie. The African Canadian community? That you yeah. Oh. But also, like, also around the globe. Oh, yeah. I saw a video of, uh, people watching it in, from South Africa, of some people who had just come out to, from, from watching it, and they were, like, over the moon. They were oh, yeah. celebrating, they were dancing <laughs> in, like, the lobby. Yeah. You know, they were just, it, they were having a, an amazing time. Yeah. Um, even when I watched it, when I came out, I was feeling, you know, really, like, uplifted or whatever. Uh, by by the movie, and I can I can't even imagine how how much more that would be if uh, I looked like the people in the movie, or if the people in the movie looked like me. Oh, okay, yeah. Um. So so I'm 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 uh really glad. Like, nah, this is, I'm making this about me, but it was a really good movie. Mm. I like, like are are you you're finding the um the exciting part was that it was showing uh like the Afri- an African culture. In this in this movie, as opposed to just like a Eurocentric, like many other movies. Well, like I can't like I I can't speak particularly to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I I can only speak to I guess m- my reaction to how well it's being received mm-hmm. by uh, the African community. Right. The as as far community. as I can see it. Yeah. Um. But. Um. But no, and it's also like a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. I watched it twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time was for like a staff screening. So it was just me and like one other person in the back. So it was basically like a private screening. Yeah, jeez. Right. Yeah. Um, it was early in the morning though. Oh. So that, so that was... So a... do you get free movies? Uh, nah. Uh, not, not really. Well, like free movies with restrictions. Oh. Um, but I, I really wanted to see it with like with people. You know, like I wanted to see the people's reaction. Oh. To it. Like the Strangers? audience reaction. Yeah. To it. You know. Um... Because that, that adds, that's part of, I think, one of the value adds to seeing a movie in the theaters. You know, you're seeing it with people. Oh, yeah. You know, as opposed to seeing it by yourself in your home, mm. for example, you know. Yeah, it's less exciting. It also depends on the movie. You know, there's, uh, I would that's say, true. two two movies at opposite ends of the spectrum are Avatar mm. at the, you should watch it in the theater mm. uh, end of the spectrum. The Ava- James Cameron's Avatar, the one with the eight foot tall Smurfs. Right. And at the other end is Cloverfield by J.J. Abrams, you know, which works better as a home video thing. Yeah. With with Avatar, it's because of how big of a spectacle it is, of how like, pretty it's supposed to look, and which is, and it being pretty is one of the only things that everyone could agree on. Right. Um, seeing it in a theater adds, you know, adds an element and being around people seeing it and them all reacting to how pretty it looks and, and so forth. But with Cloverfield, because of how, because of how the movie is, Filmed, structured, I don't... Uh, because of the camera work. The camera work in Cloverfield, because it's all handy cam, camcorder stuff. It doesn't work as well uh, on the big screen, but m- works much better on, like, a TV, because it looks like a home video that you're just popping in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, what also comes to mind for me is uh, anything that's... Um, well, not anything. I, like, a, a drama that's that's cerebral, that's very in the mind. Give me one sec. What also comes to mind for me is uh, is dramas... Sometimes I like watching dramas um, by myself. I guess I I watched Moonlight by myself, and that was very. And which one is that one? Is that like a space one? No, it was the the best picture of 2017. Remember they, they oh, accidentally uh, said that other movie. Um, I don't remember now. Ryan. Oh right, right, right. They they accidentally said La 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 Land. Yeah, but Moonlight was the one that that really won. Oh yeah, no, I'm confusing it with Moon, which I also haven't right. seen. Yeah, yeah. Mo- Moonlight was amazing. I mean, obviously it was the best picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't take my word for it and it was take this very like on the nose name <laughs> award <laughs> it was uh, a story about one person's um personal journey i suppose a drama in uh, about one person it felt very felt very personal and um i guess that's why watching it by myself it was it was nice. It it didn't like I like watching comedies with people. Mm. I like watching um, crime movies with people because we're figuring out something, we're laughing together. But for this one, it felt very individual, and it, it was nice to watch on my own. I guess. Also, on the topic of some things being better for the big screen, and something's better for like the home viewing. Mm. You know, I remember reading or hearing, reading, reading 
something about uh, The Wire. The show The Wire? Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Cool. I haven't seen it. But apparently, um, when they were making it, the guy who was making it um, intentionally uh, uh, made it be like the the camera scale. I don't know what these, what, what these things are called. Be um, four, four by three rather than... I don't know, 16 by 9 or whatever, like the widescreen is. Oh, okay. Um, so it's formatted for TV? Yeah, formatted for TV. Okay. Or like what TVs were at the time. Yeah. Uh, like a square thing rather than the wider theatrical thing, even right. though they could do it. Uh, because he wanted it to be like what the news looked like. Oh, okay. Because, you know, you don't see news on the big screen. You see news on your TV screen. Yeah. And your TV screen is a square. Mm. And he wanted to tap into that or like make that connection. Mm. At least from a... Um, filmmaking direction mm. that's interesting and I, I suppose what you're saying is actually a bit different from what i was saying because i was thinking of watching a movie by yourself which you can very much do in a theater although i i suppose i separate those two things because i, I never go to a theater by myself mm. that to me feels like a social event which is what i think you were getting at too where you want to react with people even being in a room with people as opposed to being by yourself watching TV, it's a different experience. Yeah, like, it's uh, uh, similar to that. Like, that's why they put laugh tracks on TV shows, you know? Oh, like yeah, to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, no, no, like, when, like, things are funnier when other people are are signaling to you that it is right. a funny thing. Yeah, definitely. That, that seems like a, a human thing to laugh with others. There's also the, like, peer pressure of, like, Oh, they're laughing. Why aren't I laughing? Yeah. I, and the, your brain just like kicks it up a bit to like, Absolutely. oh, I get it. You know, a bit faster than if you were just like, you, you weren't paying attention. If you weren't, didn't know to be looking for it. But if someone right. laughs and then like, oh man, did I miss something? Oh, oh, I get it now. Have you seen like Two and a Half Men with no laugh track? Or I've seen Big, uh, Bang, Big Bang Theory with no yeah. laugh track. It's so bad. It's not even funny. I, I, I agree that the, that the Big Bang Theory is a terrible, terrible show. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, terrible, terrible show. But... You, you you do gotta give them some leeway because it's filmed for those pauses, right? It's not oh, okay, yeah. Like that's like a, stru- a structural part of the show. It is f- like it's it's uh, removing that aspect draws attention to the artificialness and the forced nature of it, right? But so would you know taking out the score of a movie? <laughs> yeah, that's you true. know. Oh, it that reminds me of. Um, did you see that? Uh, the the most recent mummy movie the one with uh, Tom Cruise, no, the I didn't the know that existed. the the trailer for it when they released the trailer they accidentally released a trailer with the where the audio was the I believe the like five point one surround oh, okay. version yeah but YouTube doesn't have five point one surround so it only oh. picked up like the center audio oh which is the like filling in the gaps oh, audio really? yeah so. It like it is hilarious. <laughs> um, do you want to show me show you now? I have it on my phone, or should I show you after? Uh, show me after. Okay, because it is it is nuts. But so it's only like picking up. It is yeah. I, I if listener, if you haven't seen it, I recommend looking it up if pause you can. Now. Here's your chance. Uh, yeah, pause now. We'll be back. You'll be back. We'll be here. Um, hey, welcome back. We haven't done it in a while. I think. Um, <laughs> the joke is done on every podcast, by the way. Um, but. Uh, w- we're still here. Joel still hasn't seen it. Still no. Listener, hopefully you've seen it because it is hilarious. Um, Don't laugh without me. Uh, but no, I'll, I'll show you after. Um, of 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 removing necessary parts that add to the emotional um, package that a a yeah. work a in this case a trailer or in other cases like a like a movie or show or whatever yeah. is trying to put forward. Um, and that's why, like, that's why they put music into the th- into these like TV shows and movies to like help you along on this emotional journey that they want you to go on. Yeah. How, how about this? The Sound of Music with no music and no singing. That would be a completely different film. <laughs> Much sadder. M- much more because it's one of the few. It's one of the musicals where like they're they're explicitly singing, or like music is explicitly part of yeah of the thing. It's their lines, right? They're singing. Well, why don't we get right into the sound of music, and then we'll we'll get into that. We should give yeah. So our our topic this week was the sound of music, another capital capital C classic film from the sixties, um, and a brief synopsis of the film. You want to take it away? 
Do you have one? Uh, Julie Andrews is bad at being a nun, so the nuns send her to be the governess of this family uh, with seven kids and no mom. And she becomes friends with them, even though the dad is very, like, strict. And then there's another woman who eventually steps out of the picture when Christopher Plummer, the dad, and Julie Andrews, the nanny, governess? I don't know. Realize they fall in love. And then they run away from the Nazis. Over the mountains, towards the Nazis. (laughs) So that's how I would describe it. Joel, why, why don't you tell us what it's actually about? (laughs) <laughs> the film is about a young Austrian woman studying to become a nun in Salzburg in 1938, who is sent to the villa of a retired naval officer and widower to be governess to his sub- seven children, after bringing and teaching love and music into the lives of the family through kindness and patience. She marries the officer, and together with the children, they find a way to survive the loss of their homeland through courage and faith. We should have something about Nazis in there. So, Joe, uh, what did you think of The Sound of Music? Any, any, like, initial thoughts? I... Like, you've seen it before, I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah, which, this is one of the, of the few in our list that we've both actually seen. Yeah, like, prior to it being an assignment. Yeah. It, it won't be one of us trying to convince the other person yeah. to like it. Yeah, we won't like it enough, <laughs> hopefully. The reason that I watched this movie was because, like I said, I'm a music teacher, and I was teaching people solfege, which involves do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, which is one of the main tenets of one of the songs in this film. So I kept tenets? teaching tenets. Tenets, sure. Yeah, is, is that not the right word? A W-W? What? A wrong word. Oh, I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting you to, to stop so suddenly after <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, continue. Okay. <laughs> so I would teach people solfege, do re mi fa so, etc. And people would always ask me, oh, you must have seen The Sound of Music. Like, can, can we sing that song? I was like, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> what are you talking about? So I was finally convinced to watch it. And something else is about me is that I hated musicals for the longest time. Oh, yeah? But, yeah. But just in these last couple of years, I've realized that I just really like them. They're very joyous, I, uh, fun to watch, the great songs, uh, yeah, so I, I fell in love with this movie just a few months ago. It's another classic movie that I I hadn't seen until just recently, but not because of this. Mm. And my initial thought... So, so you'd only seen it like a couple, the first time, a couple of months ago? Yeah, mm. maybe six months ago, something like that. Mm. Um, but my, my first thought about it is that I just sort of joyfully like it and i don't think i have a lot of a lot of well a lot to say about it like if i were assigned this on a test to like uh relate the sound of music to current oof, the current political climate of america I, I i don't know if i could pull anything out i just i just like it hey, uh, can you like put into words anything particular about about it that you like well it's it's done so well. The the How story do you mean? the story itself is it could be seen as a typical uh, love story or something that's not particularly special. But the performances in it are great, and there are so many small moments within it that make it uh, a story that's been told told very well. And even that gets more complicated with the the fact that there are Nazis involved and that this is a true story. So it's, it's, to me, it's a typical movie and an atypical. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Uh, but like, is, is there anything like, um, I don't know, more tactile that like, you like the costumes, you like the arrange, the musical arrangements. Julie Andrew totally, uh, plays, uh, is totally believable as a nun or like what, anything like, <laughs> She's, tangible you can like she is absolutely believable in this role as someone who cannot be a nun <laughs> <laughs> i love her singing voice and it's her 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 personality as as this character is very uh enjoyable mm. you know it like and by by a typical story i mean that she comes to this house and sort of saves the day makes everyone happier by being kind and and uh, helpful to everyone and sweet to everyone. So in that way, it doesn't really push any anything for me. But it's... Ah, I'm just talking in circles. I, I don't know. So, so you're saying it's 
It's the reverse of Mary Poppins. I haven't seen Mary Poppins. You haven't seen Mary Poppins? <laughs> I probably saw it when I was five. How have you not seen Mary Poppins? I don't know. I like these kind of movies, and this is part of what we go through with watching these so far. They don't tend to come up a lot, especially when you're people our age. Like it's a classic Disney movie. But like, and I'm aware of that, and I'm aware that it's probably good. But I wouldn't sit down and watch it unless someone told me to. It was referenced in a Marvel movie. How have Which you Marvel movie? I I I can't say it'd be a spoiler. It anyway. I that's um, over my head. <laughs> Uh, but, uh... Why don't you tell me how you feel about it? It, I, I liked it. It's not my favorite musical. Mm. Um, my, my aunt is a singer, so, uh, and she had this on VHS, mm. back when VHSs were a thing. I think it was two VHSs. Oh, it's a long movie. Yeah, it's like, a little too long for me. Yeah, it's, it's almost three hours. Almost three hours, yeah. Um, but, so, so I was aware of it, um, when I was young. I'm not sure if I cared about it at all, like, mm-hmm. in a particular way, but I was aware that it was a thing that existed, and, uh, my aunt would occasionally sing songs from it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was, if I was aware of it, I was also, I was probably, I was certainly too young to, like, uh, like, care that there were Nazis <laughs> in any, like, meaningful way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I did, um, but no, it's like, it's a, it's not bad. I, the songs are catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a lot of fun, right? It's a lot of fun. Um, the 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 ending is like clever. I, you know, I like a good clever ending. I I like a movie that the character solves by being clever. Oh yeah. Um, I uh yeah. I I don't have anything specific to say about it. I I did though uh, a couple months ago back in September. Um, with my my mom and my sisters watch it. Um, on stage at the Queen Elizabeth Theater yes. when it was. I want Stephen King. In... I'm joking. It's a fun joke. <laughs> yes, <Come on>. we <laughs> we watched a stage production of Stephen King's It at Check. the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Check. Uh, it was really hard for them to get a a gutter into the theater, but but they managed. And now they're not allowed back. <laughs> um, but no, we watched a stage production of The Sound of Music uh-huh. um, at the Queen Elizabeth Theater, and like I had. I had not seen the side of music in a while, so I like watched it before I went. So I would, you know, be, that's because that's what I do, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. I was trying to come up with an explanation, but <laughs> that's the explanation I could come up with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I noticed that there were some things that they had that were different, that were different between um, the movie and the stage mm-hmm. production, which I believe is the more original uh, thing, like the stage, the stage one. Yeah. yeah, it was the stage, and then they changed some stuff for the movie. That's right. But the movie is much more popular. Mm-hmm. There's uh, also, much more well known. There's another movie based on the same family from the fifties. Mm. But go on. Um, but yes, yeah, so so everyone is more familiar with the movie because it's a movie. They right. don't have to go anywhere to see it. Right. They can just pop in two VHSs mm-hmm. and watch this three hour. Epic. Well, of... they pop in one, and then yeah. Wait a while. <laughs> Go on. Um, what one thing is that I noticed that um, what one thing that I was disappointed that they ended up cutting from the stage production for the movie. Mm. That was unclear. It's not in the movie, but it was on the mm. stage. Is a song between um the the dad, the captain, I believe, and the baroness, the other woman. Yeah. Um. Well, that's right. And where where they're basically saying that their their love won't work out because they're too rich. Right. Like they and and how they like need some kind of hardship for their for their love to to thrive. <laughs> uh, but they're both like wealthy and and happy, so they. Their their love is doomed to failure. It was a neat, it was like a clever, like funny song. It's an interesting thought. Uh, uh, and I liked how it sort of you know addresses the trope of like, you know, like the all the like the movies and stuff have like the the, the couple has some kind of adversity that they need to overcome, mm-hmm. and their relationship is all the stronger for it. Mm-hmm. But if it's just like if you're just happily married, then I guess it's doomed to failure. Yeah, that's um, absolutely true. But also one thing I noticed about the stage production was <laughs> oh, sorry, I should. Uh, clarify this. I'm, that's not absolutely true. <laughs> Things are good. It's gonna end. <laughs> I, just, I like that thought. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. Go on. Um, but what like so one one like iconic scene I guess from the movie mm. is the captain. I, I think his first name is like Georg. Yeah, they don't Georg really mention or something. They just call him dad and the captain. I don't think anyone calls him dad. Oh, a father. Yeah, father? yeah. a very like strict father. You know, like, <laughs> right. father. <laughs> how was your? Uh, but anyway, you do not ask him questions. <laughs> um, but um, 
when he arrives home from somewhere, I forget where it was, yeah. um, and he sees, like, a, a Nazi flag right. hanging over his door, and he, yeah. like, like explicitly tears it down, like, rips it in half. Yeah. Right. I've seen, like, gifs of that. Oh. Every oh, once I in a while. I have while. two, actually. And, and as, like, a very, like... Connection. Yeah, as, as a very, like... It's a it's a it's a neat it's emblematic. emblematic scene of yeah. him like ripping this Nazi flag. It's a really satisfying rip too. I love seeing him just tear it. In oh yeah. Like um, but but in the stage show, when uh, that's that part of the story showed up, that didn't happen. So I'm like, oh, I'm wondering. Oh, I'm guessing they're doing like a like swastika free mm. playing yeah. of of um, of the sound of music, and this was. So now it's 2018. So it is. Uh, it was in September of 2017. So it is about almost a year into the uh, weird presidency oh. in the states. Oh, yeah. so I was. I was guessing like, oh, okay. I guess it's you know they don't want to like uh, uh, people already get the parallels or people already get the people understand that they're Nazis. We don't need to like wave a swastika <laughs> around or something. Right. Um. But then towards the end, when they um the family is like press ganged into the performance at the end, mm. the way they do the scene transition, right. Is well, it it goes it goes from them being in the house to them being on stage, mm-hmm. or like the setting goes from the the house that they're living in and trying to flee from mm-hmm. to to the stage that they're going to perform on, mm-hmm. and the way they do the transition is four giant Nazi flag banners just fall from the ceiling. Oh man! As like like curtains, like yeah, and it was shocking. Like I got like oh, yeah. I should because like that was the first time swastikas had shown up. On this stage production that I was watching, yeah. Yeah. and it's also so sudden and so big. Yeah, it's like fifty foot tall. I don't know fifty foot tall, but like however tall it is from the stage to the visible ceiling. Yeah, um, just drops and unfurls, and it's four huge swastikas. Yeah, um, and then you know the family like steps out, or like the the MC or whatever comes up from the side, and then like announces the von Trapp family singers, and then they come out from like between you know one of the banners, mm. and you know do their song and dance. The they they sing good night and then the dad sings Idlewise, mm. um, and then they they vanish right because like that's how that's their escape that yeah. was their their cover for their escape right. and then um, the transition out of that was even better or like I don't know even better but also at least as good because what they did was they had the so so basically the the swastika banners the Nazi flags had like cut off the last quarter of the stage the back quarter of the stage mm. or or half mm. some some part of the stage um and the part in front of them that we could see you know w- was lit up mm. like a stage because it was both a stage in the in the mo- in the thing and structurally it was literally a stage yeah um and what they did was they cut the lights on the front of it and turned on some like moon moonlight behind it mm. and there were some like rocks so it was like Nazi officers like climbing some rocks like looking for them with like a flashlight oh, yeah. and they'd like shine the flashlight through the banner oh. so it would like filter a bit and it would pass over the, the crowd mm. and then when the Nazi officers uh, approach the thing they like grab it and pull it down in the dark so it's just like a really cool scene transition oh. both into the stage from from the house to the stage and then from the stage to like I don't know the woods or whatever that they're trying they're looking for them in mm. and it was a really neat visual thing a visual effect that like not that you couldn't do it in a movie but why would you you wouldn't need to really Mm -hmm. because you can just go somewhere else but like the way they did it within the restrictions of it being on a stage was amazing yeah and also like like i said the the shock of like four huge swastikas yeah just unfurling from the ceiling (laughs) like oh oh shoot yeah well you remind me of something else that i enjoy about this movie and other ones that are based off of theater is that the scenes are, especially these older movies, they tend to be shot as if they're, they're on a stage. Like, I'm thinking of the first scene with the nuns singing, um, uh, what do you do with a problem like Maria? You know, that one. Um, and then they sing that song at her wedding, and I'm like, what are you doing? She's yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty insulting song. Um, well, with that one in particular... They all seem like such stage actors, like their their emotions or their um, display of their uh, facial, their movements, their, their, well, what am I thinking of? Their facial. Their actions. Their facial expressions. Mm. They're all very exaggerated. They turn their heads a whole lot. They move their bodies a whole lot. And they're, they're all on stage making um, more or less shapes with their body, which is done in theater a lot that I've seen. Now, I know what you mean. Yeah. But... 
I the way you phrase it, I want to just imagine like a Cirque du Soleil kind of. <laughs> they're making squares with their hands. <laughs> Like, or just making like weird like shapes with their bodies. Yeah, yeah, they're just pulling a YMCA. No, no, like <laughs> where, where they're if we're looking at an overhead view, right? How they're all standing, right? They or they arrange make, themselves by height or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Or they might make a triangle. They might make a square. It's something that that can be done in theater. And this is like I assume this would be a pretty basic part of theater. I don't really know theater um, to make this set look more interesting. And seeing that on film, I always find it very captivating. And it, it allows for these these long shots that are very well choreographed that you don't see as much in, in modern films where shots tend to be a lot quicker and mm. and it's not made for a stage, so they're not wide. I, I, I really like theater, so seeing it on TV is like a chance to see how it's different from... I've seen in a movie that is it's different from a, a regular movie. The, the thing you mentioned about like quick cuts is also a thing of like... A, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a flavor of the month. That's not the one I'm looking for. It's like a um, stylistic thing that like comes and goes, or like mm. is currently very, very popular. Oh. Because I remember in one of the film classes I took, they showed a comparison between a scene from, I believe, Bonnie and Clyde, mm. and a scene from the first Jason Bourne movie. Yeah. Right. Where and the scene from Bonnie and Clyde was when they spoiler alert get shot in their car by like I, I'm guessing the cops. And it is a, like, uh, five-minute scene in slow motion of them just being riddled with bullets in, oh, for, Clyde. for five solid minutes. I thought you were referring to the other movie that we had talked about where they drive off the cliff. Oh, Thelma and Louise. Yeah, they no. do not get riddled with bullets. <laughs> <laughs> they, they drive off the cliff, and then just to be sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like a five-minute scene yeah. of... Bonnie and Clyde just being riddled by Tommy gun bullets. Five minutes? I, I might be exaggerating, but but not by much. <laughs> really? It is a extended slow motion scene yeah. of them just like writhing. Wow. As they're, as they're being like hit by these bullets. Yeah. And it was like long takes, like long, long shots of like like a, like a 30 second cut or like, a, I, I forget the specifics, but very like uh, uh, relatively long. Yeah. Especially compared to today. Um, shots before there's a cut of another angle yeah. or of the other person. And they're just like, uh, like, you know, in, in, in movies, when someone gets hit by bullets, they sort of like wiggle around a bit sure. before they fall over. Maybe in real life too. Couldn't tell you. Um, so just like five minutes of that, of like just long takes. And then compared to a Jason Bourne movie, I forget which, which one the first one is. The Bourne Identity. Is that the first one? Uh, maybe. Um, but the fight scene where he ends up using a microwave to blow up a house. No, a toaster to blow up a house. Mm. Um, or no, the one where either he dives into a window or someone else dives into a window to attack him and he's using like a magazine to hit this guy. Anyway, um, for both of these, both of these clips, the prof had us like count the, uh, how many seconds between the cuts. Mm. Right. And in Bonnie and Clyde, it was like 20, 30, yeah. maybe 15 or something like that. Something long. Yeah. Whereas in, uh, The Born Identity, it was like no more than three. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Like three seconds. So like one, two, three, cut. One, two, three, yeah. cut. One, two, three, cut. Of like, yeah. Of of an action scene because the Bonnie and Clyde thing is an action scene of them being riddled with every bullet that exists yeah. in the world, yeah. basically. <laughs> Are you exaggerating? Um, whereas in and in Jason, the the Jason Bourne movie, it's also an action scene, but it's like super cut up. Yeah. By the quick cuts of like, like punch, cut, face, cut. You know, yeah. jump. You know, just like just cutting around. Yeah, I think one's not necessarily better than the other, of course. I don't think you're saying that either. But I find the long cuts so interesting because we don't see them as much. And we've seen them in all three films that we've talked about so far, the classic films. But it's also like, it's it's it sort of becomes such a thing that it's it's like an impressive thing mm. when it's like a one single long take. Yeah. Right, like, like I remember... In Daredevil, are you going to... Yeah, oh yeah, Daredevil yeah. is an even, an even better example. I was going to oh. say in uh, Children of Men. Okay. Have you seen Children of Men? No. It's, it's, a, it's okay. Alright. It's, it's, I haven't seen it in a while, so I might be, uh, maybe, maybe I'll like it more. But it was, it's, it's solid. Mm. But there's, there's a single, like, it's one of those movies with like a single long take. Or it, uh, maybe I should talk about a movie that I have seen. In uh, The Avengers. Have you seen The Avengers movie? Okay, well, in the big climactic battle. <laughs> I said no, listeners. There's, a um in the big fight scene at the beginning of the fight scene or towards the beginning of the fight scene mm -hmm. there's a it's sort of a single take it's it's sort of fudged around with there being cg and, and stuff like that mm. but it's uh the camera like goes to each of the heroes in turn as they're fighting 
this alien invasion. So it'll, like, uh, go to... It'll have Iron Man, like, shooting, like, laser beams out of his hands at mm. the aliens. And then pan... And he's on a bridge. And it pans to the other end of the bridge to uh, Captain America, mm. who's, like, using his shield to hit things. And then yeah. um, Captain America will run near Iron Man, and Iron Man will shoot his laser beam at the shield. And he'll, the Cap will uh, pan his shield around to sweep the beam across the army of um, uh, uh, aliens. And then as the beam is sweeping, you'll catch a glimpse of Thor. And then Thor will f- fly past and mm. hit something. And then uh, nearby, you'll see, ha- like, he'll he'll like throw an alien into a building and then it'll zoom up to the top of the building and Hawkeye yeah. is there shooting arrows. And then you'll follow one of the arrows and it'll go past the Hulk and you'll see the Hulk, like, take down, like, a flying whale or something. Or some kind of, like, <laughs> but all without, like, an obvious cut. Yeah. Right. So it's as an impressive like one take. He also had a similar scene in uh, Black Panther. You right. know, of a cool oh. like one take. But and in uh, Daredevil. Uh, the Daredevil. Yeah. That's probably that's a super popular. Yeah. Are, do, do you want to talk about the Daredevil example? I, well, have you seen it? Yeah, I've, I've seen it a couple times. It's just this uh, long, long fight scene that looks like it's it's just the one actor walking through and beating the crap out of people and like in very coordinated stylistic ways and it lasts for you can't, maybe you a can't minute. spoil you can't like reveal how they did it before you explain what <laughs> what they did <laughs> well that's why it's impressive it, it looks like it's one long uh, so it's type. it's the daredevil fighting like 20 dudes yeah and the camera stays in the hallway and he's like backflipping back and forth between the rooms up and down this, this hallway mm. like just punching these like henchmen mm. and like throwing them through the doors into the other room sort of like I think I've described it in the past as like you know how in Scooby Doo when they're chasing the monster or the mon- they're being chased by the yeah, monster and the they hallway. hit the hallway and they go in one door and they come out the other yeah, one yeah. and then go into another one and come out a third one or whatever. Yeah. It's like that but a fight scene. Right. Right. Is how I've described <laughs> it in the past. Or like Benny Hill, I think they. Yeah. Originally. Um. But uh, like like you were saying, uh, since the camera, it's and it's all one take. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. And it's like, how, how long would you say? It's like a three-minute scene? Uh, uh, yeah, I was guessing a minute. Maybe it is three minutes. It's long. Regardless. Yeah, l- longer than... Not three seconds. Yeah, it's it's like a, a noticeably long take. Yeah. Uh, and it's all one take. It's, it's like you're watching it and like, why hasn't this... Like, this camera is still going. Yeah. It's very noticeable. And it also like adds the mystery of like what's going on. Because like, you can't see into the rooms. Yeah. So we just hear this like... Beat down happening. Yeah, it's flushy meat packing sounds. Yeah, um, and like you were saying, the way they did it was whenever he would dive into a room, that's how they would like seamlessly switch to another stunt actor. Mm. So like, it's not just like one dude just getting super tired, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> fighting for like three but minutes straight. I had no idea until you told me that. So like, that's part of why it looks so impressive because you uh, can't tell. Oh yeah, and like because like it's you can't tell because it's like dimly lit, yeah. and he's also wearing like a mask. Yeah, and he's also just like. You know, like a generic white dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, he, he'll, like, dive into this room. He'll, like, tackle a guy into this room. And then off camera, he, he, he quote, unquote, will dive out and tackle someone else in another room. But it's a different stunt actor. Yeah. And then they'll fight in the hallway in front of the camera for a bit. And then they'll get thrown into another room and then swap out again, you know. Yeah. Which is a really clever uh, way to, um, you know, tag in and out. Yeah. Uh, so, back to, back to <laughs> The Sound of Music. <laughs> I really like that fight scene when <laughs> yeah. uh, Julie Andrews just punched all those ninjas in that hallway. Oh, yeah. And the captain <laughs> came out with his whistle and yeah. he pressed the button and it turned into the saber. That was great. <laughs> None of that happened. But yeah, uh, well, we were talking about the long shots. Hmm. Uh, and that's something that I see in, in movies that are based off of plays. It reminds me of plays. And I think that similar to what we were just saying, it it requires uh, a lot of coordination and a lot of skillful acting of staying in the, in the character for longer. And it like, I trust it a little bit more because I'm looking at one long take of people and provided they're not going to rooms and coming out like daredevil's a bit different. Um, but if it's a big long take of two actors doing a scene, you get to see every little detail in a conversation, it's not just three seconds and then over the other person's shoulder for the other person's. Or what really drives me nuts is when it's doing over the shoulder shots and you can see a reflection of the person who's speaking. And every time that it shows the the speaker, they'll make a body position. And then it shows their reflection when it shows the other character. 
so the, the speaker's reflection is shown, and now he's in a different, he or she is in a different position. I'm thinking of one specifically, that's why I said he. But it's revealing that... I'm that, curious what this specific example is. You know, I can't remember right now. <laughs> but, but I can see it in my head. Uh, it's, it's it, more like it's, a continuity error, though. Well, it, I mean, it reveals to me that they did this in a bunch of takes. Mm. And I love in theater and in this long shots, you get to see every little detail of what the actors are going through. The the one takes are also really risky, though, from a, like, filming perspective, like, and potentially costly. Uh, like, I remember, like, hearing that um, Jackie Chan movies, mm. you know, if it's, you, you know it's a good one, if, or, no, there was a video with Jackie Chan describing, you can, you know that a fight scene, uh, that they know how to fight, like, like, actually know how to fight by counting how few cuts there are mm. in the fight scene. Yeah. Um, and his movies, the, the ones that he's in charge of, uh, mostly the, the Chinese ones, um, the fight scenes are, uh, taken in, I haven't seen like a Chinese Jackie Chan movie Have you ever seen in, a, in a long time, oh, okay. but, uh, or, or at all, I'm not sure. I, oh. But, um, they're either made up of like, from what I understand of either like several like long takes of like mm. fights and then they cut or maybe even like a continuous one, mm. but, um, th- that, that, uh, but not in the, on his, on the one movies he makes stateside, mm. right? But that's because, uh, one explanation I saw at least is because, in the U.S., they don't have the budget to just have Jackie Chan make 20 takes of him, like, throwing a chair oh, yeah. properly. Yeah. Just so it'll land in a specific way he needs it to. In America, they wouldn't do that? Yeah. you're saying? Oh. But in... They, they will in China, but on a, in stateside, they'd, like, no, we don't have... We don't have money for that. We can't... Oh. We can't, like, have the camera focus on Jackie Chan for, like, eight hours while he's trying to throw a chair so it lands properly. Oh. And everyone else is just waiting for it to happen. Mm. You know? Right. So, so like that's that's I guess adds to um, the rarity of long takes, which adds to the um, uh, value of them, the how how impressive they are mm-hmm. because they're so few and far between, or they're oh, so yeah. risky. Yeah, something that, that crossed my mind with this movie is why do why is the music necessary? And I think. I really enjoy it. And like I said, I enjoy musicals now. How, how do you mean the music? The All of the singing, like the, the, everything that makes it a musical, all of the mm. songs that they sing. Not the uh, the soundtrack, um, not not the background music, but um, mer- the song Problem Like Maria, I assume it's called that, or uh, um, Dori Fa Solitito. Like, what does singing these songs in a musical add to the movie? And the only conclusion I can really draw is that it's fun to see this coordinated, lovely music being done. It's it's a spectacle in and of itself. It doesn't really add anything to the story. And that being said, I'm fine with that. Like, it's just a fun thing to watch, right? I think it's just fun in itself. I was wondering if you had any other thoughts about about the what, a, what songs like that do for a musical. Mm. Well, like... You know, spectacles tend to be fun. Um, like the frivolity. Oh, oh yeah. big word. Um, <laughs> uh, word, word a day. Um, but the, you know, the excess of it, you know, like the unnecessariness yeah. of it is what, um, helps make it impressive, mm-hmm. I think. Um, uh, the example I'm thinking of is in The Greatest Showman mm-hmm. with, um, uh, Hugh Jackman and Zach Efron and other famous people as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have one that I, I might have mentioned this exact thing because this is the thing I always talk about when I talk about this movie. But they have a, it's not a duet, but you know how in a musical when two characters like argue sing with each oh, other? Yeah. Uh, they had one of those between Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron. I think you'd call that a duet, but they're arguing is your point. Yeah. And like, I, I also find it more fun to describe it as like <laughs> song arguing or whatever I, I describe it as rather than just calling it a duet. Yeah. Because like, I, I think like a duet implies like, you know, like a romantic duet, you know, oh, yeah. or most of the time. But anyway, uh, so it's it's uh, it's a song argument between Hugh Jackman's character and Zac Efron's character, and they're in a bar, mm. and the only people in this bar are Hugh Jackman's character, Zac Efron's character, and the bartender. Mm. And the bartender totally pulls his weight oh, in yeah, the song. Really yeah, and they didn't need to have the bartender there. Mm. You know, he doesn't say a word. Uh, he doesn't even show up. Again in the movie, or yeah. before, if I if if I remember correctly, yeah, um, he's only in this 
movie for this one scene. And he steals the scene, in my opinion, mm. because of the uh, bartender stuff he does. He, like, juggles the tumblers. He, like, moves some chairs around. He sweeps up some stuff off the floor. Yeah. You know, all completely unnecessary to the um, uh, 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 structure to the song, strictly speaking, but necessary for the... To, to make it impressive. Yeah. To add to how impressive it is. Yeah. So it's it's just a fun extra thing. And that's yeah. the extent of it. Yeah. Like, the, like people tend to... Or I, I, I say people. Me, at least. Uh, really likes like cool... Like, not cool. Like neat background stuff. Mm. You know? Like in uh, Into the Woods. I feel like yes. there's a lot of that in there. Do, do, you, do you mean the film or the... Yeah. Okay. The film. In, in the background, there's a lot of dancing. A lot of little things you have to look out for. Yeah, no, I was going to bring up Into the Woods uh, earlier when you are talking about um, film adaptations of musicals, because that's another musical that I've, I have I, I was made aware of when I was a, when I was just a kid, mm. when I was younger, because um, my aunt also had that on VHS, oh. and not, now I have it on DVD, but the original, I'd say original, the like recording of the stage production from 1991, mm. or whatever around there, the like... First. The quote-unquote original. Like, mm. there was some before that, but that's the only one. That's the biggest one that's been recorded. Oh, okay. So that's sort of... Like like with the Sound of Music movie. movie. Mm-hmm. Like, right. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, with the Sound of Music movie. Yeah. Like, it's the one people are are most familiar with. Right. There um, is another one, but no one would refer to that. Right. As, yeah. Um, so I, I've seen that, and and when I was uh, made aware that it would come out as a, in the cinemas, in the movie theaters, as like a film, like yeah. as a proper film, I was really excited. Did I tell this story before? I don't think so. Um, so so I um, went to, I went to see it on opening day, which was Christmas Day, oh. whichever year it came out. Um, I think it was like 2015. Though. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's right, 2015. Um, and so I get there and I get my ticket. I pick up my ticket. Yeah. I bring it to the uh, podium. And the person's like, oh, you know, we're not letting people in yet. 2014. Oh, okay. Well, December. So, like, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. um, and she's like, oh, we're, we're, we're not letting people in yet. You know, you can just wait off to the side. So I wait off to the side. And mm. for, like, two or three minutes, and then I see someone go up to her. And, like, I I thought I overheard the, overheard the same theater that I was going for. And then they yeah. go in. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's suspicious. Yeah. But I still, you know, no, no, this person would tell me. Uh-huh. I explicitly wanted to go in there. She, they they said to wait. I'm gonna keep keep waiting. Yeah. And then, um, uh, uh, fr- the the doors of that theater open, and I see some people coming out, and I recognize my aunt and my sister, and I'm like, oh, okay, so that's that's where the movie is. Oh. They're coming out now, so I should probably. I also didn't want to like hear any spoilers. Yeah. Right. So I, I you know got my ticket torn. I got in line. Um, and by then they're already like. Uh, I ended up being like three fourths of the way into the line, so I'm like, okay, there were people here before me. I don't know why you didn't let me in. Oh. Um, but you know, so, so I was putting in my my headphones because I you know I, I didn't want to hear any spoilers in case people were like talking about something they read yeah. right before they came to see it or something. Um, then I see my aunt coming up to me, and you know, so I take out my headphones, and then she's like, oh, don't worry, there's plenty of seats, or, or like, or something like that. And I'm like, okay, but if I'm at the back of the line, that won't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I'm like, okay, okay, so I, sure, that, thank you. Then I, I, I'm about to put my headphones in, and then she's like, uh, you'll be disappointed. I'm like, why are you telling me this? Like, oh, 30 seconds know. before I watch the movie. Yeah. So then when I, when I, when I, when we do get in, like a minute later, and I sit down, and, um, I get a pretty good seat, because I, like, just rush to it. Mm. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. Oh. Um, but then when I watched it again a week later with my friend, I really liked it, because I hadn't been primed to not like it. Oh, really? 30 seconds before. Yeah. Why was I telling the story? I forget. <laughs> Um, but the, the, the comparison between the <laughs> stage production yeah. and the, um, cinematic, you know, with like set, like locations rather than just oh, a yeah. stage, um, it's, uh, they, they had to change some stuff, you know, I guess for time and for like to simplify the plot. Yeah. But in many ways, I prefer the, the, the older version of it because it's more, okay, there's more the details woods. of Into the Woods. Oh. Um, because they had to like, you know, cut some stuff. From the the film version, mm. um, uh, because like it's on the stage, they have to. There's they can. It's a different kind of audience, you know. They can get away with stuff for the lack of a better word, um, or it's part of it's part of the package. Yeah, you know. But but it's not part of the package in a movie. Right. But um, you know, I, I would describe the original one sort of as like a director's cut, you know, an extended edition with more mm. details um, compared to the movie. Um, but I will say that the the one 
thing that the movie did do much better than in the play was the the duet between the two princes. Mm. You've seen it. Oh right? yeah, so funny. Um, fighting with, with each other. Yeah, um, and they're talking about how being a prince is so hard. Mm-hmm. That's um, right. Whereas in the stage production, they're just on a stage. There's not really. There's not. I don't remember any particular like set decoration for it. They're just on a stage and just singing. Mm. Um, there might be some like tree silhouettes in the background, but no like really set de- decoration. Mm. But in the movie, they're like on a waterfall and they're just mm-hmm. like splashing water. They're like uh, uh, valiantly like running back and forth in this pond above this waterfall yeah. and like splashing each other. And they like at the at the climax of the song, they like strike a pose at the peak of the waterfall or whatever. Yeah. And that that um, that number itself, in my opinion, was worth the price of admission. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is something they couldn't do uh, uh, reasonably on a stage production, right? Oh, so that's yeah. that's something that they were allowed to, they were able to do because they were not restricted to a set, right? And that's something I heard about in the Sound of Music as well, uh, and that I, you know, I guess noticed uh, uh, implicitly or like by design when I went to watch it on the stage is that with the movie version, this the one with Julie Andrews, they tried to use the loca- like being on location as much as they could. Oh yeah, like, so well. Adding scenes of them just like s- like skipping through the f- the, the the countryside. Yeah. You know, going through the on like the almost the Alps, I believe, the, the yeah. big, uh, hills and mountains there. Yeah, they like use they go on location, which is yeah. something you can't really do. Also, the the house that they filmed it in was the house, the real house of that family. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So just being in that building is is using the the uh, something they can never do on stage, of course. <laughs> <laughs> unless they put the state, unless they like performed it in that house sure. as like a live performance. Yeah, which would be cool. Um. Oh man, but that's also sort of like risky, like filming it like on the actual house. What if they like broke something? Yeah. Like there's a bunch of, I say a bunch, there's like uh, more than you'd expect stories of someone accidentally breaking something because they didn't know it was real. Oh yeah. Like there's a, I, I forget what it was or like who it was. I think it might have been Jeff Bridges, yeah. a movie with Jeff Bridges where he's some kind of woodsman. I don't, I, I haven't seen the movie. I only saw the, the clip of it, but he's playing a guitar. It's a very fancy guitar. Yeah. And, like, there's there's a lady in the scene. I, I haven't seen this movie. I don't even remember what it's called. Um, but he gets upset, and then he picks up the guitar and just smashes it. Yeah. Um, like, bashes it against, like, the wall or something, and, like, like turns it to shreds. And uh, in the script, it was supposed to be swapped out of the fake. Oh, no. But um, it was not for this oh take. My God. And the reason the... And, like, the the actress who was in the scene her character is supposed to be like freaking out because he's smashing a guitar yeah. but the actress herself was actually freaking out because like oh. and saying like no wait wait what, what are you doing yeah. because she knew that it hadn't been swapped out for the fake oh yeah so oh. so now and I think it was like a fancy like expensive guitar like, like a historic guitar oh man and so now like they're not allowed like that company does not rent out their their famous guitars anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, those can be thousands, like, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, so there is, like, there's that risk of, like, um, although there is that argument for, like, authenticity, you know, like, uh, there's some, some movies have, instead of getting actors, you get people who actually do the thing to show up as an extra of doing a thing. Oh yeah. Um. You know what, I, I think I, I might have been might have been mistaken about the house that it was filmed in. I wanted to make sure. It looks like they actually filmed in, in several locations. Well, they had to be someone's houses. <laughs> yeah, well, they were in the town. Mm. That I know for sure. Um, I assume the building. Uh, it looks like they might have been in the original building, but they were in the original town. I, I think that still uh, has a footing. They were in the original space, and they couldn't have done that on, on theater. Sorry about that. That's underwhelming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, they they did film in a lot of uh, a lot of the historically correct places. Mm. I should say uh, to to shift gears a bit in regard to uh, sound of music. Yeah, what did you think of their accents? I, I remember oh. you mentioning this a bit before we recorded. Well, I mean, they mostly sound American, but they say Fraulein. <laughs> oh, that, that is sort of a convention to, like, you know, remind you that they're supposed to be, spe- they're, like, nominally speaking a different language. Right. Well, that bothers me about most films where they speak English, but they say words that it- aren't. Like, in The Get Down, that's one I was just watching recently. Which, that was the show where it had the different takes, and you could tell it was 
the same conversation, two different takes, mm. as the body position kept changing. Well, the Hispanic characters in the Get Down um, within a uh, Hispanic family speak to each other in English, but then say specific uh, words that place them as Spanish-speaking people. <clears throat> That's and what people do. I, in, within a family, yeah. I, I imagine that these characters would be speaking <coughs> to each other. I, I, maybe, sure, they could do that. I got the feeling that this was done for me as an English-speaking audience member when it could be more accurate. That usually bothers me. Were, were any of them old? Uh, yeah, I mean, <coughs> like, 40s. That's, that's, that's totally believable for me. Like, in, in um, for example, on the show uh, Fresh Off the Boat. Yeah. You know, with um, uh, uh, Randall Park and... Oh, man, I forget the, the, the lady's name. Oh, man. Con- Constance Wu, I believe? I'm going to guess. Yeah. I'm going to guess on that. <laughs> um, they, they're, they're a... I think they're supposed to be... No, no, they're not supposed to be Korean because Randall Park is Korean, but he's playing someone else. I think they're Taiwanese, um, but they they talk to each other in English, mm-hmm. but talk um, in let's stick with Taiwanese to the grandmother. Well, that, that would be Mandarin, right? Is there Taiwanese? I don't, I don't know. Okay, um, it's that's that. Sure, and th- that's something that happens in Canada for sure. Families do that if they were if they're more comfortable in English, someone would speak English. I can't speak for everyone, of course. Sorry, go on. <laughs> but like, so so like, I don't I, like I I don't think I would see that as as a weird thing. Like, mm. it's weird if um and in uh, the sound of music, there's no English person as the the contrast, or like not as the contrast, but right. Like for sure, if at, like uh, a lot a lot of movies, I say a lot of movies, but it's it's a thing that's been done that's done in movies where like they just replace this language with another language. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's usually doesn't come, come into, and that doesn't usually uh, rub me the wrong way unless the English, unless the English that are replacing the language with um, meets someone who's actually supposed to be speaking English. Yeah. You know, which doesn't show up in, um, I almost said once upon a time in uh, the kind of music Absolutely. as far as I t- and, can tell. Yeah. But, and it was just the, the, the same point that I was making. That's why it bothers me in that one, but not in this. Because it's just the whole thing is translated for us. But I mean, like, so uh, I guess I don't understand the the get down episode, the example that you're using. The, there are people who uh, are have a proud Spanish heritage, Mexican heritage, not Spanish, but they speak Spanish, uh, and they're uh, Mexican Americans. And as far as I'm concerned, they would probably speak Spanish to each other at home, and it appears as though. They're speaking English for the audience and throwing in certain Spanish words to just reinforce that they speak Spanish. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's that's more common than you're you're realizing as a It's hard to say, thing. right? I, yeah, it's it's hard to say. But um what uh, uh what what I do find weird though, mm-hmm. uh uh the same way uh in re- regard to what you're pointing out is when like there is a movie wh- where they're where there is someone who is speaking English and then someone who is supposed to be not speaking English. Mm-hmm. Um, or like they, they speak English because they're talking to someone who's speaking, who is speaking English mm-hmm. and then they go off and there's no one and they're not talking to, there's no reason for them to continue speaking English. In, yeah. But they continue to speak English. Yeah, totally. Um, or like they just speak with like a, a bit thicker of an accent. Yeah. Uh, you see this a lot in That's like so World cool. War Two movies, right? Where, where, um, when, uh, like, a German soldier is talking, or, like, a German officer is talking to an American officer, and the German is just speaking English with a German accent. But then he goes off to uh, talk to his German troops and continues speaking English with a German accent. Yeah. You know, that's weird. Yeah. You know, but um, I didn't uh, find that weird. I, I, that it didn't uh, that didn't act trigger for me in in uh, sound, sound of music. Yeah. What, although I, I, I it was weird. I found that they didn't all have the same accent. Yeah, totally. Because like the the youngest son and the youngest daughter were both clearly American. <laughs> you know, like what what is the what is the youngest daughter like Gretel? Gretel. Um, you know, like. Everyone else is trying for a bit of like a fancy, like a posh accent, and then like I'm Gretel, you know, like well, also posh that would be British, right? But like, it's, it's but still, you know, it's like a like a like a upper class. You oh, know? okay. I don't I don't mean posh as in like a specific sure yeah. accent, but like a like a fancy, you know, like moneyed oh. accent. <laughs> um, whereas uh, Gretel is just like just a just a kid in a, in suburban America, you know, like I'm Gretel, you know, like. <laughs> 
everyone else is trying to be a bit fancy. Yeah. For um, sure. well, I think, or a bit proper. Yeah, yeah, well, posh American would be, like, transatlantic. Sure. Like, the movie star sort of voice you'd imagine from the 30s. Yeah. And it, they were sort of talking like that at some point. Yeah, and imagine, like, if, like, the entire family spoke like that. Yeah. And then one person was just, like, inexplicably Southern or something, you know? Yeah. It was, it was, it was <laughs> weird. Or, like, two yeah. of the kids, I guess. Yeah. Um, I agree. I love the the sound of the the, the of music? boys sound music. You got to know the the youngest boy's voice. I think it was Frederick. No, Frederick is the older brother. Oh, okay, it was Kurt then. His voice it's it's just got this weird quality. It's like I used to watch South Park. I don't anymore, but the the way that the kindergartner children would talk, I can't even describe it. But mm. they. They have this way of talking where it sounds like you're really just recording some kids speaking. Like, they're not even acting for mm. a thing. That's the way that Kurt came off uh, in the movie. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not all that familiar with South Park. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, I, yeah. See, I can't even explain. Just something about his voice is very uh, innocent and childlike, more so than... It sounds candid, like he's mm. not acting. Maybe that's just a testament to his acting. Yeah, so... I think that's the heart of it for both of us. It's it's weird that their accents don't match at least. Make it consistent. And same thing with the English. Make it make sense. Although with, I guess, to, to go back the other way with the accent, maybe they were just like the better candidates of of the ones they had. Mm. And they were maybe were like, I don't know, uh, uh, like them being better than the other candidates for that role over um was more valuable than them sounding alike yeah i don't know perhaps i mean if we're getting into this kind of stuff too you could also and i always think about this think about how the kids don't really look like the adults they i always think about that in movies and that's sort of a spoiling thing or not spoiling seeing behind the curtain thing for me it oh. takes me out of the movie a bit although we but don't they, they can't hire hire for that really they they could I guess again they that'd be a, skin they, color, they could that that would like um again it, it it depends on what what they put more weight on you know whether it's like acting ability or sounding alike or looking alike yeah um but though but we don't ever see the mother so maybe oh, yeah. you know she's the one that makes them all look different sure yeah you can make that assumption oh, and, like what they, they do always... Uh, I mean, movies in general will And they do wear the same clothes, so... <laughs> True, so they have to be siblings. <laughs> movies do hire for skin color and and often hair color, and so I'm sure they take at least that into account. I, like, I, I'm sure they do. It's not like it's a coincidence that they're all... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that'd be something pretty high up on their list. Yeah, and um, this is also taking place in Austria, and, and many of them have blonde hair. That was on purpose. It's just some of their faces are like, mm, you're not brothers, and that can, <laughs> that's bothering me. But then getting into that is the same nitty-gritty of, of not having the same accents. Like, it's hard to hold that against a film. So, so uh, uh, to, to switch gears and yeah. talk more about, like, like, picking at the story. Oh, yeah. Because um, we're English majors. Right. Um, <laughs> so so the, the, the way the family... I will, like okay, setting aside that the family is like marching towards the danger rather than away from it. Um, setting that aside, I'm curious about what like uh, uh, the what we expect will happen next to Max in the movie mm. and the nuns in the movie. And oh, Max is is the is the, is the, the uncle the the yeah the right. like unrelated uncle the right and um, who, who's the other one you mentioned the nuns oh right. Because like at yeah. the end of the of the movie, I forget if it's the movie or the stage thing that I watched, but one of them more strongly suggests that he'll be executed oh after the scene changes, basically. Oh my god! Um, whereas the other one, he'll he'll be oh I'll be, I'll be fine, whatever. It, I that's probably the play that would suggest that because mm. I don't remember that in this movie. Okay. <laughs> well, I imagine the nuns would be severely punished if it's. Uh, in this specific circumstance with Nazis, like, <laughs> dealing with them hiding a prisoner of war. Well, something well, like even Well, even not that, but them, like, sabotaging the vehicles. Yeah. You know, very true. very explicitly still having the pieces yeah. in their hands, which is the last we see of them. Yeah. Yeah, they... That's... That, I did, that didn't even cross my mind. They would... That was bad news bears for those nuns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that that's really interesting. I never even thought about that because it doesn't really encourage you to think about that. 
Well, it's supposed to be like a like a fun like the the like like they did it. They figured. Y- you it know out. how in like a movie when the bad guy or like when someone when the hero asks a, someone or a group of people for help and then they say they won't and then in at the eleventh hour they swoop in to help. Oh yeah, so- that's that's sort of the trope that I saw the nuns doing there of them mm. like. S- surprise we're on your side right uh kind of thing we'll and it's supposed to be like a goofy like good thing they did that thing this uh, this out of character you know like you wouldn't expect not not out of character but you know you wouldn't expect a nun to it more or like, less is because they're lying and stealing even you can think of it like that sh- sure but i mean like you wouldn't expect a nun to or like the nuns didn't show any particular uh automotive no- knowledge mm. to disable oh yeah some sure. nazi vehicles you know yeah. what i mean um so it's like we we did a bad thing, yeah. you know, kind of. Yeah, it's it's like one step down from Deus Ex Machina of like, like they they have this autumn autumn. I, um, the, 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 but but I think I think knowledge. something being one step away from Deus Ex Machina makes it already very far from being Deus Ex Machina. You okay. know, like there's like I don't <laughs> I don't think Deus Ex Machina can can be a granular scale. You know what I mean? No. Either it is a sudden... I, I can't I can't think of, like... Like an earthquake opens up and kills the bad guy. Like, yeah, oh, or, like, oh, the cars just don't work for no reason, right. and they don't they don't show the nuns doing anything. Yeah. But anything, if if they do any... Okay, maybe not any, but any explanation, mm. doesn't that sort of m- make it not... Oh, no, never mind. It could, be, it could be a bad example. It could be a bad reason. Never mind. Well, I, I, I suppose I'm thinking of, like you said, nuns acting out of character in a way that we would never expect them to do. It's like they had this skill all along, and we just find it at the end because it happens to help the main characters. That's the same sort of unexpected saving grace as Deus Ex Machina, which I always have trouble saying. Hmm. But I'm getting through it today. Yeah, yeah, you you, you did well there. Thank you. Um, here's something else. This movie to me, it's a. We weren't in the middle of like. Okay. In the sound of music, it plays off as a love story for maybe three quarters of it for a good amount of time, at least two thirds. And then at that point, that's when we start learning more about the German soldiers, the Nazis, trying to get the captain enlisted in the army, um, trying to get him to fight for the Nazis, which he doesn't want to do. It's suggesting that, that, uh, a simple love story can be, can be going fine and like working out and that can all be thrown away by political uh, reasons beyond one's control that we see explicitly by Nazis taking so taking over um, the situation. It's 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 it starts as a simple love story that looks like it has a at a reasonable conclusion, like they're going to get married. That's more or less what I expected from this. But then that gets turned on its head by the uh, political will of of the day. Of things completely out of their control. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, I don't, like, so, so, so you're saying that, like, for, I think you said, like, three quarters of the movie, it's, it's a a love story, story, and then Nazis suddenly show up. Yeah, and what could that be suggesting by doing that? Uh, it could suggest a lot of things, depending on how, like, bought into the story you are. You know, if you're not bought in at all, you could say it, it suggests that they needed some some kind of uh, uh, climactic event mm. uh, or whatever. It's based on a real story. Sure. sure. Um, I remember reading a thing where, like, if you think about it, all the stories based on a true story are part of the same cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. More or less. Um, but uh, I don't know, because like, it's... Like, what? like not not being a a hist- history person, I I I like there might be like subtle clues, you mm-hmm. know, scattered throughout the earlier parts of the movie that like signal that Nazis are going to show up. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe this the them saying what year it is. I don't know. Um, that could <laughs> be a, also, could be yeah, a big clue. Absolutely, um, year nineteen thirty five. Hmm. Something's around the corner. I think they even say it's like the last year before shit hits the fan or whatever. Oh, yeah. In the like opening like yeah, okay, title card, said that for sure. The last year before shit hits the fan. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you were going to say something. Oh, it's why would this? If it's based off a true story, they could write it in any way that they want to. Why not just make it a love story? Why not just make it a story about escaping Nazis? Why does it have to be both? 
Well, I think because it's based on a true story, right? Like, because it's both. Yeah, because it is both. Like, it's, and, and that they're both, um, intertwined, mm. you know, in a way that they can't be separated. Mm. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe the original text also had, um, the, the, the captain struggling with a gambling problem or something, but that mm. could easily be excised from the movie and the play. So they did, yeah. you know, but, but these two elements need each other yeah. to exist. Like that's the, that's the that's the husband that's the husband's that's the captain's entire um maybe not entire but that's his like overarching concern. Mm. You know, that's his like character trait that like he he's stern but he's not evil, you know, like yeah. um and and there's a scene where he gets upset at Max for when Max is like uh, maybe the Nazis are going to take over. What can you do? And then he gets super upset, the most upset mm. uh, he's been in in more or less the entire movie. Yeah. Of like, what kind of attitude is that? What do you, what do you mean? What can you do? You know? Mm. Um, to show that he has, um, I don't know, like a passion for something and not just the strict, you know... Uh, authoritarian. Authoritarian, yeah. Yeah, and that that's an interesting thing that, that these two... So this is based off a real-life story and these two elements have to exist together. It, it, it suggests... Well, they, they have to exist in that they did. Yeah, totally. And that, that's a real world thing. I, I suppose that's what's, what's on the tip of my tongue right now. It's that this, a real world love story isn't just falling in love. And it's not, it's even just not falling in love with two people who are, um, completely stable and rich. Like this movie suggests that, it's it's about everything that's going on at the time. So it's it's hinting that, that it's not just um, like it can't be a love story without this political thing that was happening in Austria at that point. But I mean, like, like it doesn't if, exist in a vacuum. But like, if if I'm trying to avoid the phrase, if you think about it, um, <laughs> but you if you it. think about it, um, isn't every love story a love story plus something else? I'm thinking every love story is a love story in a vacuum. And not everyone, that's too overarching, but many. But like okay, what's 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 one that is in a vacuum? I, I it's, can't think of Yeah. yeah that, is or that is in a vacuum, yeah. Um, that is like strictly just a love story. Um What's a love story? Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, that's But it's a it's but that, like with Beauty and the Beast, it's a love story. Plus, like, being ostracized by society. That's true. In that yeah. Belle is ostracized because she's smart, yeah. I guess. And yeah. the Beast is ostracized because he turned a beggar away when he was 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, like, that's that's what separates the love stories, you know? The the thing that is added on top of the love story. Yeah. Um, right. Like... Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. It's... A love story, but they're stupid teenagers. I think we've discussed this yeah, in a previous a episode about how that's my favorite interpretation of yeah. Romeo and Juliet, in that they're just stupid teens. Yeah. Um, it's, it's also their society that wants to stop them and that makes their love interesting. Yeah, and in, or like in uh, the Adam Sandler movie, Fifty First Dates, it's a love story, but she has amnesia mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. In... Thor, the first Thor movie, it's a love story, but he's an alien who's so. super buff <laughs> and has lightning powers. Right. Um, but side note, that's a, that's a reading of the Thor, the first Thor movie that I, that I didn't notice, but have come to uh, enjoy that it's a, it's a rom-com where one of them is a superhero. Yeah. Um, what else is there? What other, like, love stories? In, I, like, Serendipity, it's yeah. a, a love story, but explicitly talking about the, like, weird coincidences of fate. Yeah. So it is necessary, and if it's not there, then maybe it's a boring love story. Like, uh, here's a, a rom-com that I really hated, um, uh, and someone out there might hate me for this. P.S. I Love You. I, I saw it probably ten years ago now, and I just couldn't stand it. It felt so vapid, and... I've, like, I've heard of it, but I forget what the premise of that is. I, I would probably butcher it at this point, recapping it. It felt like just, well, it was dealing with someone's death. It felt like a lot of, uh, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Blah, 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 blah. N nothing, ugh, it was in the back, ugh. <laughs> other, other love stories that have, like, a weird thing put on top of it is one, The Lake House. 
yeah. with I think Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves, yeah. where they send letter each, letters to each other through time mm-hmm. via the mailbox at the lake house. They both eventually they 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 subsequently own. It sounds like the time travelers, sort of, well. but it's through the mailbox. Mm. Um, and also, um, oh man, the other thing was going to be the punchline, but I forgot what it was. Through his um, mouth, sends letters. Oh. Um. Oh man, this would have been so funny if I remembered the punchline. Oof. Oh, and the other one is "Remember Me," which is a uh, romance film with Robert Pattinson, and I forget who the female lead is, but it's a rom com plus nine eleven spoilers. Um, <laughs> so so that's the thing for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that's how these rom like. You could say that the romance, the, these rom, these romance stories, these love stories are the same except for the setting it is in or the yeah. framing that contextualizes it because they all sort of, I say all, um, I, they, they all, they all end the same way in that, in the Shakespeare, in the, in the Shakespearean sense. And it's, it's either a tragedy in that they all die or a comedy in that they, they get married. Mm. You know, I, either of those plus, a weird framing thing that makes it unique compared to the other love stories. Plus a frame, right? It's just the frame of a setting of... Yeah. A, like a political, a social, an environmental setting that this has to happen in. I think you're right. I, di- I disagree with what I was saying before. It's every movie has that. I can't imagine one without it. Um, the best advice that I've ever got for being a game master at... Uh, for Dungeons and Dragons type games, shifting is, gears <laughs> is write a story that's been told and write it well mm. because that's all you can ever do. Everything's already been told. You just have to find a way to make it good. I think I'm ready for final thoughts. Sure. Well, for me, this is close to what I started with with this movie is is it's it's a love story done well. It's fun to watch. It's I find the acting. We didn't even really get into the acting very much at all. Um, fantastic, fun, to say the least, to keep it brief. I enjoy to watch, and after I watch it, I feel happy. Like, it puts me into a happy mood. I, there are dark parts of the movie as well, but overall, it's, it's, it's a spectacle, and it's a joyful spectacle. It's, it's, uh, it's what's been done before, done very well. What about you? Uh, y- yeah, it's... I continue to think it's a good musical, but not one of my favorites. Um, like, I, I don't know, it's, like, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not, like, in terms of, like, genre, I'm not really into, like, a period piece. Mm. Um, I'm more into sci-fi, so if they were, like, space Nazis, then sure. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's a solid movie, it's, I, I say as if it needs to impress me. It's a classic, it's a classic, it's, everybody loves it. Right. Um, everybody knows the songs, Julie Andrews is a treasure, whatever. Mm. Um... Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, I, I, I forget what I, what we normally well, say in these segments. Our, our rubric for this is normally we don't pass judgment on it, but say something about it. I suppose I pass judgment on it uh, a bit. <laughs> a li- I, I can make mistakes, little ones sometimes. And <laughs> that I think it's, it's a, it's a love story done well. It's a typical story done well. But beyond just I like it, I feel like it's done very well in for many different small aspects. Sure, yeah. Like I think like part of what makes it so um well received, I don't know, like what makes people like it so much is that it is um one, well made, you know, the production values and such, the well performed mm. uh, the actors and such. Um but it also it like it's a it's it's a good story, you know? Mm. It it's, it's like good. people like it. The songs are catchy. Nazis lose. The Nazis lose. Uh, We're describing Indiana Jones right now. <laughs> it's the same movie. Yeah. They just it's... took out the songs. If you take out the songs out of Sound of Music, it's Indiana Jones. Oh, man. You're right. They just, in the Sound of Music, they just cut away before all the faces melt off <laughs> from the Nazis. That would have been the next act. After... The, the after the the von Trapp family singers, the grand finale would have been, "Hey, we found the Ark of the Covenant. Let's all open it and look at it." Right. <laughs> Let's all look at it together. But they mess it up by fleeing the scene. If they had just stayed, you know. Classic. That's that's where the universe diverges. Oh. You know, in well, Indiana well, Jones. Into Indiana Jones. No, no, between Indiana Jones and uh, the, the Sound of Music. Right. 
Whereas Indiana Jones stays there mm-hmm. and doesn't flee mm-hmm. because he's tied to a rock or whatever. Right. Then all the Nazis die. Mm-hmm. The, von, the Von Trapps decide to flee mm-hmm. and the Nazis don't open the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, okay. Makes sense. <laughs> so the, it, it, Indiana Jones was mostly in our world is what you're saying. Yes. It's of the two, this. Indiana Jones is the more historically accurate one. Right. Good words to go out on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listeners, that's all we have to say today about the sound of music. Uh, if you'd like to, if you like, if you like us, give us a rating on App Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. Five stars would be great. Hell We'd prefer yeah. five stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to go a bit extra, you could leave us a review. Those are also really helpful. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your classmates. Tell your nanny. Tell your seven children who all wear the same thing. But don't look alike. And ha- inexplicably have a American accent. Tell your cat, tell your dog, in the hopes that another human will hear. Yeah. Or, or like, write it on a little like piece of paper and attach it to your pet. Sure. As, like, as a messenger pigeon. Right. But only if you have pigeons. Knit it into a sweater for your dog. <laughs> I, I can't follow that. <laughs> um, but yeah, do all those things and more to spread the word about this amazing podcast. Um... <laughs> If you and if you want to go even further, even further, you can uh, throw some money our way. Throw it at us. on Patreon. We are on Patreon dot com slash all doubt. Or is yeah, it, uh, all, all the links are on our website, and our website is all doubt dot com. We appreciate all the support you give us. Any funds that we receive, we can put into buying more media, maybe buying more expensive media. Buying another microphone so we could each have a microphone. That'd be amazing. We're also on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook at uh, All Doubt. We're on Twitter at All Doubt Pod. That's on Twitter at All Doubt P-O-D. Tweet at us. Send us our, send us your questions. You can send those questions to AllDoubtPod at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts about the sound of music. Uh, any questions you might have. What kind of questions should they send in, Joel? What, oh, what kind of questions? Yes. Uh, like, how tall are you? Uh, what color is your hair? What, I, I'm just thinking of question. what instruments do you play? I'd love to answer any of those. I would not. <laughs> if you could send questions relevant to this show, send those questions to, again, alldoubtpod at gmail.com. I will take any and all personal questions. Vincent will not. Direct your irrelevant questions to Joel. Rather than to my ego. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Have a good week, everybody. It's the same movie. Yeah. They just it's took out the songs.